Okay, hello YouTube. In this video we're going to take a look at how the iPad 1 still compares in 2016 to a more potent performer, and that is this iPad over here. This is an iPad mini Retina. This is the second generation of iPad mini, as you can see here. And this is of course the iPad first generation. You can definitely see that, judging by the bulky design. So, just to go over a few things first. Of course, the iPad 1 is equipped with the Apple A4 processor, which is a single core, has only 256 megabytes of RAM. This is the iPad mini 2, which has an Apple A7 processor, which is a dual core with the new Cyclone architecture, or well, it's, you know, very normal nowadays, but it was new back in the day. It has one gigabyte of RAM and a Retina display. And of course, the iPad 1 has a regular XGA display of 2024 by 768. But we're not going to go into the differences of that very much. They're both 16 gigabyte models. They both have Wi-Fi N, so connectivity wise, they're both pretty much uh, the same. They both have an interface that connects to USB. They both have speakers and all that stuff. They both have Bluetooth. So pretty much connectivity wise, they are still pretty good. And the iPad 1 is actually still relatively current. Of course, they both, like I said, they have Wi-Fi N, so that's also very important. But yeah, now, let's do a speed test. So let's turn the devices on and see how long they take to boot up. Of course, the iPad 1 is running iOS 5.1.1, and the iPad Mini 2 here is actually running the very latest operating system, iOS 9.2. That's the latest version at the time of filming this video. There we go, the iPad 1 finished first. The iPad Mini 2 is still thinking about it. There we go, let's boot it up. Let's unlock them. So now I'm going to go over the test process. All right, so what we're going to do, we're going to do a couple tests. We're going to do a browsing test to see if the browser works and how long it takes to load a page. We're going to do a test of testing a couple of apps, opening them up, see how they work and if they work at all. And then we are going to do a Facebook test. <laughs> Facebook is one of the worst apps, especially on the older iOS versions. It just seems to be very, very unoptimized. Later versions of devices don't really seem to have this issue very much because they pretty much compensate with more power. I mean, the app is written for iOS 7, so it has to run on an iPhone 4, which is, once again, an A an A4 device with a single core processor. So they have to make it a little bit lighter so that device can actually still browse Facebook. That is a little bit, uh, you know, a pro towards the iPad 1 so that it can actually still open Facebook, even though this is the iOS 6 version running on iOS 5.1.1. Okay, so let's get started. Like I said, first we're going to do a browsing test. I've got a bunch of browsers installed. The iPad mini has Safari and Chrome installed, just like the iPad 1. So we're going to start it with Safari, and let's see what the app loading time is. That's actually pretty good, but they're both like websites that I had in there. So now they've loaded up, we're going to empty the address bar and we're going to visit memecenter.com. I use this website frequently because it contains a lot of images, which is always good. I have to type in the full URL here, memecenter.com, and tap go. Of course, the iPad mini retina is already done. iPad 1 is still waiting. There we go. It has loaded the page. It's now loading the ad. We can skip that. All right. So let's see how it performs. I'm scrolling through this heavy page. Due to this low resolution, the pages are slightly smaller than usual, but it doesn't matter much. Next page loads in. There we go. 
It's actually not too bad, honestly. On Safari, at least, it's pretty good. It's pretty smooth. Sometimes you have to wait for, for a little bit of an image to load. But it's actually not bad. All right. Of course, on a mini retina, it's the same story. You can just press through it flawlessly. But, you know, it has to. It's a dual core processor. Okay. So, uh, let's kill Safari to make it a more fair match for the, uh, whoops, for the iPad 1. The iPad Mini Retina has a bunch of apps open, but that doesn't matter right now. Okay. Now let's try Chrome. Of course, the Mini Retina is already done. Let's load it Google. Once again, we're going to go to Meme Center. The yep, Apple Mini Retina does not know the website. Chrome is the best browser for iOS 5.1.1 currently. So far, it's a little bit buggy. A little bit of a cheat there, I'm sorry. All right. As you can see, Meme Center loads significantly more quickly on Chrome. But performance is definitely much worse. As you can probably see, it's quite laggy on Chrome. The problem on the iPad 1 is that a lot of websites are a little bit on the heavy side and they actually crash the browser entirely. It's not even responding to my tap there. As you can see there, Chrome is the best browser in terms of compatibility, but in terms of performance, you definitely want to use Safari on the iPad 1 even with the risk that a lot of websites will probably crash on you. But uh, that's the risk you have to take. Okay, that was a browsing test. Let's go to the regular app test. Okay, our first app we're gonna test is iBooks. Let's launch it. It's very fast on this one. And I actually had an, a PDF file open. Apparently it did not open in iBooks, okay. Well, it's a bit of a shame, really, because I wanted to test this out, but anyway. So this is a manual. Of course, on the iPad Mini, it's perfectly smooth. And now we have to browse through this thing on Chrome. It's definitely usable. Okay, that's fine. Um, Let's go to one of my favorite news sites here in the Netherlands, that is now.nl translated. Let's open it up. Okay, it's done on the iPad Mini now. The iPad 1 wants to open a landscape, that's fine. Let's load it up as well. Let's just browse through the site a little bit. Let's go to Tech News. Of course, on the iPad Mini, it's perfectly fine. It's just for comparison's sake. Let's see, Tech News. Let's open this article about Apple. Let's see. It's loaded up fine. So having a little bit of a trouble with or a struggle with the ads, but other than that, the app is functional. I would definitely consider this usable. You just need to have a little bit of patience with this device. There you go. Okay, that's that. Let's see what else one can we show here. Well, let's open up the App Store. Let's uh, keep it simple. There we go. Bam, done on the iPad Mini. iPad 1 is still thinking about it. You can really see here that the iPad 1 is just quite an old device by now. But at least it's functional. Let's open up I'm 
message. Done. Done. Let's open up Twitter. Done on the iPad Mini. And now it's done on the iPad 1 as well. So it takes a significantly longer time for it to load up the apps. Also got mail installed, so let's open up mail. There we go. Set it to all mail for all of my accounts. Yep, it is definitely in sync. That's good. Scroll through just fine. Open up an email message. There we go. Something also makes this junk. Mail performance absolutely fine. Pretty comparable to the iPad Mini here. It's a very light app. And now let's open up the YouTube app to see how it plays video. First, I have to find where I put it. All right, put it in media folder here. Let's open up YouTube. All right, finish loading on the Mini. Let's see how when it will load up on the iPad One. Takes a little while, nothing too exceptional. Let's see, let's go to my subscriptions. Yep, definitely in sync there. Let's open up this video from the Maritime Man. Good day, everyone. Holy moly. In less than two seconds, this thing started playing. And this one is actually giving an error. Right. Let's give it one more chance to redeem itself. And let's open up this video from NCX Tech Tips. Let's tap that. No, it's Saturday keys. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I have sound turned off on this. This video dis did play though. I haven't actually seen it uh, fail, uh, fail to play a video before. But uh, yeah, YouTube consumption works fine. Playing videos works fine as long as you put it in standard definition. High definition will not be able to be played on this 4x3 aspect ratio screen. And it's just 1024 by 768 so getting so using something that's a higher resolution than that is absolutely useless and a waste of battery. It has to decode everything, you know? So now let's do the ultimate test. The worst app in existence. Facebook. Oh yeah. An A7 can cope with this app just fine. An A4 cannot, and I will show you that right now. Bam, iPad Mini is done. That already took a while. This has only just begun to log in. To put that into perspective. Okay, there we go. These are messages from the 23rd of December. That's when I last used this thing, apparently. It's now starting to uh, load the most recent feed. And it thinks it has finished. Okay, so that was Facebook loading. Now let's actually browse through the app. See, it's just freezing and able to load most items. That was to be expected. I'll have to admit that. So basically, if you compare this five-year-old device to a device that is of more recent nature, I believe this is 2013, then you can really see that is just, you know, it, it's getting old. It's slowly getting to the point where it's absolutely obsolete. I would say that in normal everyday use, if you adapt a little bit to the fact that you have to wait here and there, that it's actually still a pretty usable device overall. It can still connect to 5 gigahertz access points, which is a very nice addition, especially if you consider 
um, that the iPhone 3GS, which is sort of comparable to this in many ways, cannot. It's only wireless G, and that's 2.4 gigahertz. It does not support A, as far as I'm aware. So in terms of connectivity, this device is definitely good. It has Bluetooth, it has Wi-Fi N, it has uh, cellular 3G in most cases if you have uh, a 3G modem installed. I do not. It's pretty pointless here in the, in the Netherlands. There's really no use for that, at least in my opinion. Um, it's, it's a pretty good device for media consumption. Battery life is absolutely not bad at all, considering its age. But if you see how thick this device is in the first place, you'll know that most of this is actually battery. And it's really good for just, you know, watching movies that you put on it from iTunes. You cannot use it to use, like, interactive TV, for, uh, like uh, we have apps for here. So you can watch TV on your tablet. Most of those will no longer work and require iOS 7 or 8. Which is a shame, but that's just how the industry goes. This thing was limited to iOS 5, and that's starting to become a problem now. Because a lot of apps no longer work, or you have to install absolutely ancient versions of them. Like this Facebook app is from uh, iOS 6, I believe. Most apps are from iOS 6, downported to 5. At least they're from that era. The only app that is actually semi-modern is Chrome. It actually uh, supports pretty much every single website out there, and it doesn't crash as often as Safari does, but Safari performs definitely better, but support is broken. So that's a little bit of a, of a problem there. So, should you buy a device like this in 2016? Well, it really depends on your use case. If you just want a device that is relatively lightweight, I would, cons would not consider this thing to be very heavy. Just for video consumption, like when you're like on the train or on the bus, and yeah, sure, pick one of these up. You can usually find these for somewhere between 50 and 100 bucks, no problem. And that's a good price, especially if the battery is still good. Should you get this as an everyday user over, for instance, like 150 bucks uh, Samsung Galaxy Tab or something like that, or any other Android tablet for that matter in that price range, then um, no, you should definitely go for the Android tablet. I don't think Android is as optimized for tablets as it should be, but overall performance on Android on a dual core or quad core one gig of RAM is definitely much better than this A4 on uh, 256 megs on an obsolete operating system. So there is that. That is my video that I promised to make on the usability of the iPad first generation in the year 2016. I wanted to make this in 2015, but we'll see what this year will bring iOS 10 is the next step in obsolescence for this device. So if you want a cheap tablet and you're okay with having a slightly smaller size, definitely pick up the iPad Mini 2 if you can, or the iPad Mini 4. iPad Mini 3 is a bullshit device, don't buy that. It's overpriced for what it is. It's basically an iPad Mini second generation with a fingerprint sensor, and you have to pay 100 buck premium for that. That ain't worth it. But yeah. This video was about the iPad 1. It is still fairly usable, but just adjust it to your use case. If it doesn't fit that, then don't get it and get a newer iPad instead. Hope you enjoyed this video. I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.